Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of this uh, podcast experiment type thing that we're doing. Um, we have Spence on the line like, once again, just like we did last Tuesday, and uh, we're going to be chatting it up about crypto this time around. Uh, so without further ado, Spence, how's it going, brother? Uh, it's going good. Just the same, still in the UK, still um, just doing the, uh, the grind. The regular uh, work hard to buy more more crypto, you know how it is. But um, but yeah, all good. That's all right. Good. Just uh, living the through. living the dream, right? Just fucking uh, you know working dream. working like an animal and buying that crypto, right? Yeah, working <laughs> like an animal. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on actually, and uh, it's kind of uh, just uh, today. I think it was uh, Bitcoin broke. 6k which was exciting it's getting a lot of people talking about it and i mean i know from speaking to you price isn't the kind of thing that i mean you're kind of the most uh, interested in but it's it's good that it brings more people into the space and i guess if uh one percent of the people who do look into the price look into it further it's all good for the whole uh, ecosystem as a as a whole i guess yeah for sure man um speaking of which um by the way we are recording this like about a week ahead of time so even though we broke 6k today that was a week ago <laughs> sorry yeah, so, so it's uh, yeah it's the seventh who knows right now. who knows as, as people are watching this we're probably like at 38k or something hopefully we're like at 7k <laughs> hopefully we're more close to 7k <laughs> well hopefully I, I mean i'm in two minds i mean it's it, it's one of those things when you're um when you're buying in i mean uh the uh i, I spent like the last month kind of buying him where I could and I was thinking you know it's great I, I got some like uh, cheap positions everything's great and then as soon as the price goes up you have the uh, the initial excitement of the price action then you think damn I, I should have bought more I should have got more so so you can never really be too happy I guess if you're positioned correctly I, I suppose yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I'm always happy in the crypto space because, as you were mm. mentioning before, I'm not really too concerned about the price. That's the last thing really mm -hmm. on my mind. The only thing, I mean, that I enjoy about, you know, talking about the price and, you know, having the price as, uh, you know, com conversation point is it's the fact that what you said, it, it really does bring the people in. As, uh, mm -hmm. as the price starts going up, as, uh, you know, there's more uh, price action going on within the, the crypto market, the, you know, all the other altcoins and stuff like that. Hey, you know, it really does help a lot because, look, last night I was actually talking to a friend of mine because I got these uh, singles tokens, you know, singular DTV tokens that I had from, uh, you know, back in the bull run of, uh, of 2017 or, you know, like early 2018 and that kind of stuff. And um, and I was doing some research because I was trying to see if I can get rid of those ERC-20 tokens. And, and when I just, uh, you know, went to the website... Um, singular DTV doesn't even exist anymore. Like Singular DTV now became, I don't know, something else. I forgot what the fuck they were called. But I was just trying to figure out how I can get rid of these tokens. And I'm like, fuck, I think I'm stuck with these tokens forever. And um, and sure enough, you know, my friend's like, oh, I think you can still trade them on Binance or blah, 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 or something like that. But even then, I only have like 240 of those tokens. And like, I think I needed like a, like over a thousand as a, for a minimum, you know, and, like in order just to, to get like some sort of shit trade uh, to go. But then he reminded me of something. He did remind me of something. He said that, um, he goes, well, you know, by the time that the next bull run comes along, those tokens, you know, most likely will be worth something. And I, and I, and I, I said to him, yeah, but you know, by that time, people are already going to know that this is like a real shit project and not worth anything. And all this, you know, all this stuff that these tokens aren't really worth anything. But then I also realized the fact that, you know, when we have all this euphoria, you know, once it's like a, you know, a bull market, like a hardcore bull market, you know, people are just buying to buy. And a lot of people might end up just buying these fucking shit tokens, you know, literally because they're, they don't represent anything anymore because the company doesn't even exist. It's something else now. So, but people will still be buying these things thinking that, you know, again, just because they got them at three cents or one cent that they're getting, you know, they're going to be getting major gains at some point. And, uh, you know, at that point, I guess I'll sell them, right? When, so I can get like, uh, I'll probably make like 20 bucks, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's definitely better than nothing. I mean, I, I've honestly uh, come to the conclusion myself that I think everyone who gets involved with the whole ecosystem of the space goes through a cycle of uh, the way they, um, they look at everything. I think um, if you get in, you, you, you kind of get introduced by a friend or someone else, which is made some money or you've heard of someone that's made some money so you kind of get in there and I think a lot of people 
um, they're so eager to find that next um, thing that could make them just as successful as the person they've heard about that they do um, look at all these extra options and they do skip over the kind of fundamental reasons why everyone's so excited about what's going on which leads to um, all the crazy panic buying of what happened late 2017 and I think everyone's got to go through that I think uh, if people are willing to put uh, put their um, hard-earned money on the line uh, uh, you really do have to either be super um, intuitive with what's going on or you have to be on the sidelines for a while to kind of understand it but when when them prices are going up people are just going to jump into whatever they think is going to be the next kind of a kind of big big swing up and uh, I can remember I mean I've been really interested in everything for years but I've only really had it, it it's one of those things I think the people that have been really interested in it have never had enough money to kind of get in too deep into the space but then now as things are kind of progressing these people are kind of getting a bit more uh, uh, you know a bit more um, stable situations maybe they find like a full time job since then so they're kind of taking advantage of it right now and they've got the uh, the advantage of knowing what's going on around the space but it, it definitely it's a cycle for everyone I think everyone goes through the phase of uh, they think this next uh, big altcoin is going to take over the um, Bitcoin or uh, you know Ethereum or something like that and they get excited and so they get involved but I think uh, inevitably you can kind of for me definitely you can kind of turn around and think all these altcoins are aiming to do things which inevitably Bitcoin will be able to do on its own platform eventually where, where it's uh, in versioned in along the line so I mean maybe these things will beat Bitcoin to the mala- to the line but they'll never um, they'll never beat it for the uh, for the security and the the history that it has like you know the 10 years of completely um, unaffected security that we've we've had with Bitcoin so it's kind of a interesting um, factor that's going on with all these different parties and play and things and obviously people have their own ideas and I'm not I, I'm, I'm in a kind of situation where I don't believe that it, it's not one coin to rule them all but I do think that um, people underestimate that the um, the potential of uh, the applications that can be applied to uh, to Bitcoin and people are very uh, focused on price and you yeah. know just the application of currency so yeah it, for sure it, interesting yeah you definitely yeah you made a lot of good points there i mean i i myself i'm not like a bitcoin maximalist even though there's plenty of people out there that really like they accuse me of being a bitcoin maximalist i'm talking to you Mm -hmm. xrpers out there anyways uh (laughs) um but yeah honestly like um you know i i love bitcoin i'm all about bitcoin number one but you know again like last night we were i I was talking uh, on twitch you know we were talking uh, a lot about eos especially towards the beginning of the show and, uh, you know, just, just like how EOS is probably going to be like the major game changer, you know, like the it's going to be the game changer, I think, in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of people um, when it comes to like, you know, rebuilding this whole Internet and starting the rebuilding process. And Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin is, is like, again, one of the most important uh, um, things that we as humans are going to be witnessing in fuck man at least in our lifetimes for sure even though we might not see it right now you know the whole thing of uh you know bitcoin and and all these other cryptocurrencies you know turning the banks on their head and changing the whole system as a whole um it's it's an amazing thing but you know i don't want to go off on a tangent there i actually wanted to to bring up the fact that um you know how you were talking about like the fact that uh you know when i was talking about the singular dtv tokens and uh You know, we're talking about the next bull run and how we should be preparing right now for the next bull run and and so on and how all these things go in cycles. Yeah, exactly. You know, back when uh, we were right before the bull run of 2017 and as we were going through the bull run of 2017, there was plenty of people that already went through that, you know, not just the bull run, but the losing of the money and all this other shit with, you know, again, with the shit coins, with the, you know, the whole thing, that whole thing actually repeated years prior. And uh, it was a way smaller market and way, you know, everything was a lot tinier back then. But all these people learned. And these are the people that are Bitcoin millionaires still to this day right now because they learned back in 2017. Once they got to 20K, sell and so on and so forth. And, you know, these are the lessons that we're going to be learning because uh, last time around we had BitConnect. 
you know, I think that this time around, it could be something like Ripple XRP. It could be a bunch of things. But I, I think the uh, XRP is going to be, you know, like the next Bitcoinite. I really do. I, I mean, honestly, I think there's a lot of projects out there that uh, a lot of projects out there that could explode in, in a negative way um, in the in the near future. But, you know, the way, you know, the whole Ripple X, you know, the whole Ripple network and the whole XRP uh, situation is uh, moving along. It's it's really making me think like that could be the next bubble, like for real, for real. And I know you talk about this a lot. We both talk about this a lot. And um, I don't know, man. I, I feel, I, I mean, it, it sucks, man, because I remember big, the whole thing with BitConnect. You know, sure, there's plenty of people that lost a few hundred bucks, a couple bucks here and there. But there's people that lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. They lost their homes. They lost a lot of things, you know, due to that. And um, we see people literally repeating their mistakes with XRP mm -hmm. right now. And just like you said, only because people are looking for that quick, you know, get, you know, get rich quick scheme and not really looking mm -hmm. at the big picture. Because, again, for me, I don't really look at the price per se. But as things are starting to move forward, you know, I'm not stupid. You know, I'm putting a couple bucks in, in Bitcoin. I'm putting a couple bucks in EOS. I'm putting a couple bucks in the projects that I know for, or at least I think, because I've done so much research on my okay. own on these projects, that I think that these are going to be the next thing. They're going to be the next Microsoft, the next uh, Amazon, the next Facebook, whatever. Um, and, and but that's because of my own research. Instead of just um, you know blindly putting my my faith in in these other projects, you know, again like you know XRP or whatever, you know, like a Pets.com or you know what I mean or you know, whatever, you know, like just think of mm -hmm. any other. You know, pens.com, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really, um, I mean, there's so much, uh, this, I mean, it, it really, really is crazy the amount of um, different projects out there which are up and running at the minute and uh, things that are going on, but there's so many projects which don't even have working project, uh, products or any kind of, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't like to say the word like use case because they're kind of only useful for the people which are in the space speculating on the future um, applications of all these different things. But at the same time, it's um, it, it is interesting how much uh, how much interest there is, but it's such a niche where there's so many. Uh, I mean, I, I work in a, a really um, a, a job which it, it's not. To, you know the people there have have no idea about any of these things, and it's um and that's like uh, I would say 99% of the people I work with on a on a site with 500 people, thousands of people, they they haven't got the single first clue. Of Bro, I, I, I would go as far I would go as far as saying as 99% of the people on Earth don't even know what the fuck any of the shit is. Well, yeah. And and, and yeah. again, you know, it's a, it's again another great point. You know what you're saying? Like right now, you know, of all these projects. You know, there's only like again a handful, literally a handful of projects that are actually have working products. You know, that are actually doing something, that have actually built something or have a working anything. And almost every all the other 99% of the projects aren't doing jack shit except taking people's money or misusing the the investment. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're 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 definitely gonna go through. You know, all this is very interesting. You know, but again, it's all about cycles. You know, if you understand the whole cycle phenomenon then you can understand the situation as well this is not anything new at all yeah i i honestly think if everyone who got into the um the space has gone through the same thing if they're like a veteran or they're still around and they maybe haven't i mean that's the kind of the catch 21 with the whole thing the guys who really did hit gold they're not hanging around on twitter and youtube and making comments they've already made their money they're That's right. kind of they're living their own kind of lifestyle right now they haven't got the um the need to interact with people and give people advice because they, they've kind of gone through the struggle themselves kind of thing and uh for me it's i, I don't believe that anyone who's following the space and following these altcoins and expecting things to go up will ever see that unless they truly either forget about it and things the research they did at the time proved to be um, worthwhile or um, you know most people that made that made their fortune through Bitcoin with these guys that were buying um, like LSD and, and things from the fucking uh, you know the Silk Road and then they have some spare Bitcoins lying around in the wallet which they just you know happen to still have uh, access to and then maybe they have like a, a 
you know, between 10 and 20 Bitcoins, which at the time would have been $20, but then now, you know, it's a fortune. And these yeah. are the kind of things which will, for me, I think people that buy now, in another five years, the p people might forget. And I mean, there's going to be people which did buy at the top in 2017, and they'll come back in 10 years, 15 years, and they'll be like, oh, wow, I can remember buying this and... Uh, you come back today and it's, it's a completely different story and they'll be the people which you kind of look back on and think I, I should have been like that guy but if you look in today's kind of perspective of it nobody wants to be that guy that bought the, um, the $20,000 Bitcoin and, but it's just the way things go and uh, I think as long as you put the money in which you're not going to miss and you, if you, the thing that kind of clicked with me was at the, when I kind of started getting a bit of um, a regular job going and I was buying some money and I was putting some savings towards this and towards that and I was really, really, I mean, God, I was really hoping to um, to hit a good break with some of these uh, shit coins that I was putting some money in because I was kind of going off the trend of what was popular at the time rather than fundamentals behind what was going on because I knew that if there was enough popular, popular opinion about it, it would eventually go up and I could make some good trades etc etc but it's um it's one of those things now where i'm i'm not worried about any of the um any fear that i dump into bitcoin now because i just have that completely 100 percent faith and belief and <clears throat> understanding about what's going on that i i don't care at all what the price is now i just yeah. I, I just couldn't care i couldn't care no, yeah about, i mean uh, listen yeah i mean i totally one billion percent agree with you um I mean, not just with the financial aspect of it, but like, you know, when it comes to like the, yeah, sorry about the, the bright guy out there. <laughs> no, but anyways, uh, but you know, when it comes to like the knowledge aspect of it right now, because right now it's the same thing, you know, and not only, I mean, we, could we be acquiring, you know, more of these coins, you know, with our fiat, but we could be acquiring constant knowledge about this space that, you know, once, you know, uh, the, in the, within the future, you know, within the next few years and stuff like that, we're going to be so happy and glad that we actually did uh, learn about this stuff because I don't know if you're familiar with this guy named the Dollar Vigilante. Are you, are you familiar with him, Jeff Berwick? It, it rings a bell. I, okay. I probably do, but, you but know, yeah, so, you know, these, uh... you know he, he's been around the financial space since, fuck, you know, like I want to say like the late 90s, you know, um, and uh, he's definitely been, uh, you, know, in, you know, around the Bitcoin space since around the dollar, you know, give or take. And, uh, you know, the only reason he's been, you know, been around so long is because he's learned from his mistakes. You know, when the first uh, financial crisis happened, I guess, like in the late 90s, you know, early 2000s, you know, he got wiped out. But, you know, did he, you know, he learned from it and he, and he was con constantly learning about, you know, um, the financial system, how corrupt it is. You know, reading the books from like, you know, the, the something from Jekyll Island. I forgot what it's, what's it called again. The the. The one about the bankers, anyways. But you know, just just, just constantly, you know, educating himself um, all the way up until the the other financial crisis, which hit in 20, 2008, 2000, you know, 2007, 2008. And when that happened, you know, eventually he discovered Bitcoin, and um, with all the knowledge that he had acquired up until that point, once yeah, he saw yeah. big, you know, once he re, you know saw Bitcoin and recognized what it was, you know, early on, you know, that's why he got invested in not just him but others like max kaiser and there's plenty of people so you know that's kind of like what i i try to tell people right now that even though you might not have the funds you might not have the the ability you might not have all these you know things in order to like acquire you know tons of coinage or whatever you what you do have what we all have is time and we all have a lot of time in order to acquire all of this crazy knowledge and eventually once we get to the certain you know the, you know the certain point in our in our lives in which we can you know strike then you know we would have not only all this knowledge but the tools and the ability to strike because for example you know a lot of people always say is like oh you know you you're lucky or you know you were just at the right place at the right time but you know the thing is that you know the whole thing about the being at the right place at the right time it's like you have to put yourself there so again just going back to the yeah. whole Jeff Berwick thing and you know talking to everybody else out there as well it's just you know putting yourself there so how did he put himself there well he was educating himself 
properly. Instead of educating himself on Wall Street, he was educating himself really more on the governments. What's really, how, how money is printed. You know, what, what is gold, silver? What is all of these fucking things? And then eventually, once Bitcoin came out, instead of just throwing it to the side, he educated himself on it, you know, very, you know, fairly quickly. And then, you know, just kind of coupled with all this other knowledge that he had acquired in the last decade, all of a sudden, he was able to jump on the opportunity. Um, buy as, uh, tons of Bitcoin and, and you know, uh, secure a nice position there with more gold and silver as well. And, you know, now he's nice and financially secure and he's able to, you know, live a, an awesome life. Just like a lot of people out there, just like you were saying, that there's a lot of people that have made a lot of money in this space already, but you don't see them around. And if you do see them around, they're building stuff or they're doing something for the community or they're, you know what I mean? They're actually, you know, um, a major component to the community or they're just not part of the community. Everyone that's involved in this community right now are pretty much, you know, fanboys or people like us. And, you know, we're fanboys. You know, we really are. And eventually okay. we're going to get there. You know, so for example, you know, once I get there, you know, once I get my bags filled or whatever, I'm still going to be doing this. I'm just going to be doing this, you know, on, on, on a you know, bigger, better capacity. And everyone's going to be doing something different. You know, from when I talk to you, it seems like, you know, you might, you know, maybe you'll be doing something like this. Maybe you'll be doing like an actual project or working with people and so on and so forth. And again, I don't know where I'll be either, you know, but the point is that it's just we're securing ourselves within this space by, you know, acquiring knowledge more than anything else. And uh, sure, you know, securing a position financially is extremely important and very important. I'm not downplaying that at all, but it's really more about knowledge, which is, again, that's what we're doing here right now because you know, just creating this podcast and talking about those things that we're talking about. Because look, to the audience out there, these are conversations that me and Spence have all the time. And I'm, I'm sure that I've had some of these conversations with some of you guys as well. And But the point is that we decided, you know, basically Spence decided, hey, can we record this and put it online? I'm like, fuck yeah, we can. And and why, you know, like he's taking the steps. You know, we're all taking the steps um, to, you know what I mean, like um, all differently. But, you know, some people are deciding to go code and some people are deciding to learn how to, you know, to do this. Some people are learning how to trade. You know, again, we all have the capacity to, you know, maximize uh, as much as possible, you know, through the space. And, uh, you know, right now it's like there's no excuses not to do it. And especially now, now that we've, you know, we've been through this bear market. Now that we're about to maybe, you know, it seems like we're about to hit a bull market again. Or we're, we're, the, we're the beginning signs of the, you know, the, the whole system kickstarting. And, you know, just when it comes to the news aspect, you know, there's tons of you guys out there that are constantly following the news when it comes to this stuff. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys right now, you guys know that um, the news is literally coming out, you know, you know, coming out the faucet. You know what I mean? Like uh, on a daily basis, on a minute to minute basis, there's so much news and positive news for this space that, um, yeah, man, let me just shut the fuck up for a minute. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just uh, it's, a, it's an amazing time, man. And uh, go ahead, Spence. Yeah, I don't know if you want to add some words to this so I can shut up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I completely agree. I think basically all we do now is preparing ourselves for a future position that may or may not happen. It's not a, it's not a guarantee, and nobody's saying that it's going to go one way or the other. But um, How about that, Spence? Spence, it will happen. It's just a matter of when, you know? Um, it's just going I, really slow. I, I yeah. completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree agree and believe 100 percent that it will happen and it is the future and um it's only the lack of understanding in people which don't which makes people not believe that it's going to happen and think that you know this is the future it's that scary uh blurred area between um people who just see the numbers and just see the price and just look at the chart between the people who understand what the whole thing is trying to achieve, the whole system is trying to undermine, and the whole uh, goal at the end game, I'll sort of say, what's going on, but it's not a it's not a situation where we're trying to say everyone has to be A or B, or, or for banks or against banks, it's, the system is in there for the people which want to use or need the system, it's not to tell people you know, close your account and just use Bitcoin. It's, it's to tell people that there, there's a sec, there's a choice. You know that you've got a choice, and that, that's all it's about at the end of the day. It's creating choice for people, and that's what will um, undermine all these systems because yeah. people do not realize that they've got a choice. And as yeah. soon as when you do realize it, it's it's completely uh, it's amazing when you do uh, realize that there's actually a a, a plan. You know, like excuse like the, the cheesy pun but there is a, a plan b out there which is fucking 
Yeah, fuck yeah, man. And it's, it's funny. It, yeah, and it's, 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 it's sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it's just like I want to add to your point that that's the thing. You know, the reality is that people are just scared and they're just scared of the unknown. And that's why, you know, I, I mean, we're doing what we're doing right now, which is spreading knowledge and, and trying to make it not scary, you know, make it as, as, uh, as non scary as humanly possible so that people can, uh, can feel engaged with this space and, and, and be able to, to, you know, to be able to think to themselves that they they can get involved without you know being scared away. Like I, I'm always thinking of the time of uh, you know back at the early internet. You know, like that famous little scene or or um, what is it like a like a snippet of uh, people are like asking, is like what is the internet? You know what I mean? What's this? Uh, yeah. You know, what's uh, the modem? You know, <laughs> shit like that. But yeah, it's um, it, it's well, it's a very interesting time right now, and I mean. Uh, there will be people all the way, all the way for the next. I'd like to think for the next hundred years, which will be jumping in just based on price action and char action, and that, that, that's fine. But, yeah, that's always going to uh, be there, man. That's always going to be there. We need yeah, it. It's part of the market. Yeah. And it is part of the market, but if if one percent of these people um, take a step further and look into it like I did, I mean, uh, I understood what was going on, but then I kind of didn't take it on on board completely that. That maybe you could succeed until years later. When uh, I mean, I can I can remember um, he talking to a friend and uh, talking about Bitcoin, and uh, the price was like maybe a couple of hundred dollars or something like that. And uh, I was at a position where I didn't even have like enough money to pay rent or you know it was kind of I was pretty much paycheck to paycheck. And then um, this. The next time it kind of got popular again was 2017, and I heard it all the way down, and it was kind of uh, just one of those things, and it'll, it'll happen all over again. And yeah. I know all the people which uh, contacted me during 2017, and then uh, got wrecked, completely wrecked, and they'll contact me again in 2020 or 2021 or whatever yeah. it happens. Yeah. And, uh, it's just yeah, but, but you mean yeah, 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 but you're 100%. I mean, like again, I, I remember being, you know. I've been, I remember being in the space for a very long time. I don't know the exact date, but I remember when, you know, Bitcoin was in the hundreds of dollars. And I was, like, always thinking, like, what, what is, who the fuck is going to use it? What's this for? You know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, all this shit. But it wasn't really until, like, I learned about the history of money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, gold and silver and the printing press and fiat yeah. currency. And once I really learned all that shit, um, and then, like, I, I looked at Bitcoin again and I realized what Bitcoin was. That's what hit it for me. That's what hit the trigger for me. Um, and that that's why, I, I mean, I'm so fucking gung-ho about this. And, like, I know that it's, its you know, it's, it's beyond the future. And, um, but, yeah. you know, it took me a while to figure it out, even though that shit was under my nose the whole time. I mean, and it's going to take people a while to figure it out, but it's never too late. It's just never too late to get in. You know, like, it really isn't. Even when Bitcoin is at 100K, it's not going to be too late. When Bitcoin's at a million, it's not going to be too late. It's just not. It's like saying, it's like, is it, it's like if you say right now, is it too late to get into computers? You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. no, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like that it's kind of, like, it's the same um, thing. Yeah, it's like saying, uh, I'm not going to buy a computer because, you know, they've been out for, you know, so long <laughs> yeah. and I guess nobody's going to use them next year. So I'll just wait until the next big thing <laughs> comes along. So, you know, but, yeah. but for, for me, it's, it's, it's really not like the, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I've always been interested in it without really needing a use case for it because I've always been around the EU and um, thankfully I've been quite lucky to have availability of bank transfers and things through the countries I've been in. But uh, recently when I was in Australia and I was trying to move Australian dollars back to euros or British pounds to spend and the, um, the fees were astronomical just to kind of get that money into an account which I could use on the regular. Um, I, I used Bitcoin the whole way because it was um, all I did was I, I sent all my Australian dollars to an exchange, bought some Bitcoin, moved the spirit over to my wallet when I got home, uh, cashed out what I needed, and it, I think it was something like uh, 500 US dollars was the fee that they were going to charge for this transfer, Shit. which was like my whole year of um, work, and then. Um, for the fee, and then with Bitcoin, I think it was something like thirty-five dollars that I paid. Mm. But it was uh, no comparison at all. But you can't, 
Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why when people when people talk about like the fucking fees, you know, and again, you were paying thirty five dollars because you were moving it from exchanges and all this other shit. But even when people come talk about that shit, it's like again, people just don't realize. You know what I mean? Like you know what I mean? Like thirty five dollars or whatever, fifty dollars is, yeah. is is so cheap in comparison like, to yeah. Like a whole year's um, salary or something <laughs> to make you move over. It's it's yeah. ridiculous, but well, I mean, uh, that's a totally different topic in itself. The whole. Um, argument with high fees on on the bitcoin network but it's uh, but but, it, but it's a but it's a major topic though i mean because again uh yeah, we, you know yeah. we, you deal with people deal with that shit all the time like and and, and when when they're talking about other countries like again you know people that, that, that talk about these fees you know and, and it's because they don't understand you know what it is to be in another country or to to travel mm-hmm. or to have people like that you or you need to pay somebody you know across borders or anything like that mm-hmm. you know think about it you know like you know how many times i've, I've talked to people that work with others that are in china China, and you know the only way that they can fucking pay each other is through Bitcoin or crypto or in Russia or whatever because just because of the whole bank situation that don't allow you know for people to pay other people through for services you know and that kind of shit and it's just fucking insane it's just uh, but yeah man it's a major component yeah I think it, uh, for definitely for someone that's getting into it as soon as you find a use case which benefits you it, it, your acceleration to understanding how it works is just like a hundred percent, a hundred times faster than it would be. Hello. Lost you there for a second. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I was just saying, yeah, <laughs> it's it's totally accelerated a hundred times faster when you um when you find a use case for yourself. But it is really difficult to understand when you're a kind of. If you're working a nine-to-five job and you get your pay, your salary for your regular bank, and you're just using that one account for everything you do, it's difficult to kind of open your eyes and see the actual outside of what's going on through the entire uh, world with this kind of stuff. But you know, and, and you know, but the thing is, it's like this, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you straight up. You know, like that's the argument. You know, I I used to make back in the states. I mean, for reals, all the time. But you know, out here in Mexico. Um, I, almost everybody has been able to understand the concept of Bitcoin pretty easily. Mm-hmm. And it's because out here they've actually gone through economic strife. You know, like, again, like, if uh, if I go to Argentina, they can get that real quick. If I, if I go to Venezuela, if I go to certain places around the world, you know, India, you name it, they, they get it. They, they totally get it. They get it, like, like... Like that faster than when when we were than than when it was explained to us originally, and and you know when when uh, at first you know like when you realize I mean when I realized you know the real reason for that you know as to why you know they understand it so much it was just because they actually know the value of currency I mean they actually know what currency is and what money is they know what the difference between gold silver and paper they know that you know the paper money um they know um they, they've actually gone through these situations they have other currencies that they got to constantly exchange um and they're constantly losing value like for example like they'll wake up one morning and all of a sudden their shit isn't worth anything and you know these are things that they actually live through you know like all the time and um so that's why you know when you explain to them something like a like what the concept of what crypto or bitcoin or whatever it is you know they get it really quickly and uh and a lot of them aren't necessarily necessarily like you know when you when you tell them about this, it's not like they're again just from my experience out here. When I tell them about Bitcoin, they're not looking, you know, right off the bat like, oh, I'm gonna go invest, you know, oh, you know, like so I can make some money. No, they're really more like looking at it like, huh, that's interesting. Okay, so you know, kind of thinking to themselves in a, in, a, in a way like, okay, well, the next time that we have a situation with our with our money, we're gonna move into you know into Bitcoin or crypto. Or that that world, you know what I mean? Because you know, some gold and silver might not, you know, is not always, you know, easily acquirable. And then, especially when you have an economic problem, all of a sudden, a fifteen dollar an ounce silver coin is going to be costing you fifty dollars or a hundred dollars, you know, and that kind of. And so it's 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 uh, it's a lot of things like that that like um. You know that's why again you know why one you know once I educated myself on the you know the difference between you know currency and money gold silver and all this shit um, and and then I you know learned about Bitcoin again I was like oh shit okay now now I get it now I understand you know the whole the, now I need now I understand why not only do we need this but I mean this thing is gonna fucking change you know everything that we know of every the, the world the beyond everything and. Uh, yeah, man, it's just interesting, you know, um, again, you know, just a typical nine to five worker working in Europe, working in the U.S., you know, um, working in a first world country, basically, is not going to really understand the concept of what cryptocurrency is outside of uh, a get rich quick scheme. 
because they have no yeah. they just they don't not only do they have no idea what all this economic strife really is but they're not going to really witness it they're just not you know again the dollar is king the dollar is not going to witness you know these massive swings in price the euro is you know again you know pretty much pegged to that shit and the same thing so it's not going to you know witness any kind of shit like that anytime soon and it's these things like that that's why it's, it's why, that's why it's so much harder to, to for some nations to to get this but again you know, again, I'm sorry I'm, I'm talking a lot today. I, I know you were talking more last time, you know, but just when it goes to, you know, just when it goes to, to your, your Europe real quick, you know, that some countries in Europe, you know, again, they, they, they not only do they understand Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, but they've adopted it, you know, 100 percent because of, you know, just the whole currency situation that's happened since 2008. All right. I'm going to leave yeah. the floor to you. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think I think like um, like it's a really good point that you made there about like um, all these places in Europe which really would benefit from it. But it's from what well, my personal opinion is. There's that many people around uh, Eastern Europe, or you know, South Europe, Eastern Europe. These places, which have uh, kind of they've been rebuilding since the late 90s, and they're kind of a new, brand new country. If you can imagine a, a country just starting up, and this is 20 years later, it's um, it's uh, one of these things where um, they have been uh, they've gone through that much like really bad stuff that's gone on it's hard for them to trust a new thing and it's it it's been they've been that um bullied down by these old financial systems where to accept a new one only makes them worried that it's just going to be another kind of uh a roundabout of events where they just end up with nothing which eventually you know it, it's not the um it's not everyone's uh end game to teach everyone about everything but uh, the people that will kind of take take the leap of faith and do the research and uh, get into it they will benefit and obviously people will see that and hopefully it'll just uh, spring on a chain of events which will uh, you know it's it's just like um everyone's saying it, it's it's a virus and it will yeah. spread and the more people that get into it the more people will learn about it and the one percent of people which really know i mean there's there's i guess less than one percent of people that know about bitcoin or know how it works and then there's one percent of that one percent which actually know yeah the um, technology behind it and it's yeah. um it's really but, but again you know like it's it's funny you say that because it's like not even about the technology I, you know it's like it is about the technology it, I, you know we always talk it's all about the technology but Remember, it's like uh, the whole thing with the cell phone. You know, people. I don't know how the shit works. I mean, mm -hmm. No, no one does yeah, really. You know, exactly. but like, it works. You know. So and that's the thing. You know, that's like where we, we people. You know, people are gravitating towards this shit. You know, again, like in the in parts of Europe and in Latin America and in India and all these parts of the world. You know, again, and you know, in which they're going through these cycles of uh, you know economic uh, doom and gloom, and they're just putting their faith in Bitcoin or crypto because again, just like gold and silver, it's like the only thing they can trust. They can't trust the government anymore. And um, and that's why you know we're, we're gonna just see you know I think that once the economy like really takes a major hit soon in the next uh, you know by the end of this year or whenever the fuck it is it could be next year the next year. Um, I, 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 yeah. I, I had a really really in interesting conversation with someone a few weeks ago just before I left to the UK in, in Latvia, and I was saying we were talking about all this. Um, he he was actually really concerned about all this economic. Um, the struggle that's going on with, with things in Latvia and global things and uh, you know he had a lot of worries and he was you know his only major concern was he just wants to look after his family and make sure he's not going to be in a position where either um, position A would be that we're fleeing the country because it's getting invaded by you know the third world war which is going on or um, many different situations but I said you know at the end of the day if you have um if you, if we both had ten thousand euros or dollars, for for the sake of argument, each, I I know I would only have maybe less than ten percent that in paper currency because I would be buying things like it, it sounds stupid, but I would be buying things like alcohol, I'd be buying things like um like drugs and what like things which are like useful or people want them things people don't want like paper you know if things. <laughs> got really bad like these are the things that people would trade services and goods for because they just want an exchange of something and if, if the yeah you sound like really a prepper you sound like a prepper but you know if, if 
Uh, I, I'm totally not like in that kind of um, yeah, yeah. situation yet, but it's definitely in the back of my mind where I think, you know, um, if everything went turned off tomorrow and things went totally sideways, then um, you, you'd be you'd be in the best position ever if you had um, uh, uh, you know a, a room full of alcohol. But, yeah, prepping you know, just uh, just prepping. Normal, yeah, yeah. You know, no, you but know, you're you're 100 correct. It's uh, it's funny that you're even thinking like that. And and uh, but that's just the state of the world right now. You know what I mean? That even yeah. you and all the way in fucking Latvia, you know, like an English mm. bloke, you know, a proper English bloke yeah. is thinking like a crazy American, you know. And again, there's nothing wrong with prepping, you know. Prep, people prep all over the world. The whole prepping thing isn't like a like a new concept. Uh, people do that shit all the fucking time. It's it's you know it's like a it's really like a bastardized version of being self-sustainable, you know, because like in a world where you can't, you know, in a country or in a world where it's really difficult to be self-sustainable, um, you know, yeah, people start turning to shit like that where they just start acquiring things like a, like a gopher or a, is a gopher or no, which is yeah, the chipmunk, no, you know, the one well, that puts it, well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, 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 but exa- exactly, I mean, it's not, I'm not putting it into practice, but it's just, I was just explaining to him, it's the guy who he's the next to who's worth a million euros, might have nothing tomorrow if uh, things played out a certain way and uh, you know the guy with um, a house full of whiskey could be the richest man in the country oh, yeah. if that was the most uh, sought after you know good which everyone you know if there was no more I mean I can remember a really funny um, for, like a miniature really small scale uh, situation where there was like a there was a deal with the EU and Coca-Cola where um, Latvia missed a shipment of Coca-Cola. So there was no Coca-Cola in the country for like three weeks or a month or something like that. So uh, then one of the most like popular drinks in the country is um, like a whiskey and cola. So you can imagine after two weeks, you just couldn't buy a Coke off the shelf anyway because it just didn't, it just wasn't any Coca-Cola left. And people were just waiting for the next... Uh, the next order to come in from all these stores and people <laughs> driving like um, yeah. miles and miles away from where they normally go just to find a uh, like a gas station or um, a random store in the middle of nowhere just to pick up these things and it, it, it's completely the same concept if you own the things that people want then you, it's you know the price of them things is just relative to what people are willing to give up for it so it's um Oh yeah, man. No, trust me. As uh, most uh, most Americans, and especially Americans, uh, a lot of them listening to this right now, most likely, you know, are definitely down. You know, not, I mean, uh, definitely uh, understand the concept fully well. You know, of uh, not just prepping, but the the reason for prepping and what to prep. You know, again, you know, alcohol is just as valuable as water. You know, when shit goes down, are you mm-hmm. fucking kidding me? Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, and then you know, you want to be the guy with the bullets and not the guy looking for bullets. You know, yeah. you know yeah. that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, man. And yeah, and, and then even you know even when it comes to like silver and shit like that, you know, a lot of people are always like, oh yeah, I want to like stack all these big bars of silver and big you know or gold or whatever. But it's like no, man. You know, you also gotta have like you know small little tiny bits and amounts of uh, silver that you can use to to trade and stuff like that. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna be trading like uh, you know a month's worth of silver, you know, just to get a little water, you know, or whatever. So I I, I don't know whether it's like um, I think my interest for this kind of like concept of things that can come came maybe in the last two years but it's definitely got something to do with all the um, video games I've played and things like that where you, you see all these um, crazy situations played out in these fantasy worlds and it's kind of like well you know they're not far off the truth if, if something would happen like that it would um yeah, man, I think I, I think about uh, I don't know if it's uh, cognitive dissonance or something. Was it cognitive, cognitive dissonance or anyways? But where we're like the I don't know if that's a bright term or not. But you know, there's a uh, there's a term for for this anyway. What I think is like the the governments or the people in power are kind of like putting or damn, what's the word I'm looking for? That they are getting us ready for that you know what i mean like in other words you know they're mentally preparing us you know by giving us all these video games or all these uh you know talking about zombies and killing zombies and survival and all this bullshit you know when it comes to survival because they're kind of like saying like yeah man you know get ready it's coming so yeah there was there was like a famous one i really can't remember the video i couldn't find it now but it was when a really big call of duty um uh yeah i can't remember maybe it was three or four years or something 
it was like a, a super when one of the super popular Call of Duty games came out and it was the big argument for it's basically uh, conditioning people into uh, into a state of mind that you know fight for survival kind of thing and and it was I guess if you'd ask people if you'd ask an average 15 year old 20 years ago these same questions about maybe like uh, survival and fighting for your life kind of thing in a, in a fantasy situation the answers would be so much different than what people oh, yeah. would say in today's world and these are just these kids which are kind of uh, taking these little bits of um, it's all fantasy but at the same time you know it's 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 real to a certain extent where, but yeah man but, but I mean I know what you mean because like it's funny because I'm out here in Mexico and I bump into people all the time I know I know plenty of people out here all the time that you know, grew up in a very uh, rural area, you know, not rural, yeah, yeah, rural, you know, like, kind of like out in the, in the, the boonie, you know, like, by them, you know, kind of like off the grid, and, um, and they know so much on how to, like, survive, that, you know what I mean, like, um, it's like, wow, this is fucking crazy, you know, and uh, most people yeah. today, they, they can't even change a fucking car tire. There was, there was a really interesting thing, uh, like, a quote from someone I read, which was something, it went on along the lines of, uh, I'm probably going to butcher this horribly, but it was something along the lines of the um, the uh, grocery stores are not contracted to sell you food. They they choose to sell you food for profit, so that you know they can um, every single grocery store in the, in the country or wherever you are could just decide to um, keep all of their supplies to themselves, and then the the common people have no no say in what, what food anyone gets so if you're producing your own food and you're self-sustained right. then you, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff but it's just another factor of people relying on these you know centralized systems of uh, go to the store and you know buy the food and which is what everyone takes for granted as a normal thing and I'm not trying to come across as some kind of uh, crazy person that thinks it's going to happen tomorrow, but it's just the, the concept of uh, these places which do sell you the food yeah. on the regular. One day you can turn up and it's just not available. Then you know then what? what are you going to do? No, listen, like I, I, I mean, I, I totally get, you know get that. You know, just going back to like again the whole living in Mexico type thing, where like you know, for example, like in the U.S., you know, people were always you know for the most part you know self sustainable you know for a very long time until. You know, the whole process of the cycle went where, you know, now the, you know, the system provides, you know what I mean? The, the centralized system okay. provides for the people and they don't know how to take care of themselves anymore. And then now we're gotten to a point where the economy has gotten so bad where people are going back to trying to figure out how to take care of themselves again, you know, how to grow, how to this, whatever. And now they're finding out that all these new laws and all these new regulations have passed. Again, this is maybe, again, just in the case of the United States, where now it's illegal to grow in a lot of places. You know, you can't have, like, your own little farm in your house. You can't have, like, your own little garden. You know, a lot in a lot of places it's illegal, as crazy as that sounds. You know, you can't, like, uh, collect water. You can't, you know, do so many fucking things that, you know, you can't have solar panels and be off the grid or anything like that. There's so many fucking things like that, and people are, like, finding it very difficult. Um, or, in, in, some, in a lot of ways, you know, clashing with their own government that they never want to clash with, but just because they're, they're not allowed to provide for themselves. They're not allowed to whatever. And so, you know, out here in Mexico, it's like, you know, everyone, you, you know what I mean? Like, there's no... Like, um, there's no supermarket or, you know, there's no, I mean, there are supermarkets like that, but there's no like supermarket or any big entity like that, which controls everything. Again, you know, like something like that were to happen, you know, I could just walk to the open market out here, you know what I mean? And there's people yeah, selling yeah. everything, you know what I mean? That they grew them fucking selves and, and that's never going to change, you know? And like, uh, and, and I don't know, it's just things like that, that, you know, um, it's just we got to think about and, uh, and understand. I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm fucking high as fuck. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I totally understand what you mean with the, the whole thing. For, for me, it's um, uh, I, I would love to live in a kind of society where everyone's kind of uh, providing for themselves and people are just bartering and trading their own kind of things. You know, not like necessarily you, you go into a market and you're trading for things, but. I kind of, I really like the idea of uh, being self-sustained and kind of not having to rely on um, anyone else to uh, to help your survival, I guess. But um, you know, it's just the way the world we live in, I guess, at the moment, where it's so it's so um, 
uh, like hard coded into our way of thought from from like uh, school when we all grow up. Where uh, I guess for me it feels like we're put into a place where it's meant to feel normal to kind of rely on these kind of services and not um, think outside the box and kind of provide for yourself. So. You know, it's a, it's a it's a giant loop of if people grow up believing that they need to yeah. have these things, then the things that people provide these companies they'll never go out of business. Well, again, you know, it, it all goes back to like uh, the modern day slavery, and that we're all you know yeah. it, the, the whole debt slave thing. You know, it, it goes like let's like like let's break that down a little bit. You know, but like back when uh, people were slaves, you know, they all lived on the plantation. They all got still they got paid they got paid a stipend but that money they had to use it at the company store you feel me and then everything was all centralized and enclosed and um that's kind of like the system that we live in right now the same exact thing you know so the whole when when you know we say we're modern day slaves or and you know we, we you know we say oh we're debt slaves yeah we're more than debt slaves we're actual fucking slaves we all have to buy from what the company store correct and we all have to you know what I mean? And we're all like enclosed in our own little fucking space and we can't, you know, um, try to do our own thing. You know, we like, for example, someone that's a slave on the plantation, they can't just have their own little hut away from everybody else. They got to live with everybody else in the chicken coop, right? Okay. So it's kind of like the same shit, you know? Um, but, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's, um, it's, a. Uh... I mean, there's, there's so many different talking points about it. You, I, I could literally talk for hours about it, but I, I want to move on quickly just to something else that which I was talking about, which I know you're a big fan of, which is the um, Brave Browser fork, which is finally seen <laughs> some, uh, some light, which I haven't yet to try out, which I'm not actually sure if it's available yet for um, open testing, but I know they've been doing the, uh, the beta test. For anyone that doesn't know, it's the... Um, the Brave browser, which has their um, their kind of pro privacy, anti um, tracking, and advertisements, but they've also got the inbuilt uh, system where you can earn uh, the cryptocurrency back from watching the advertisements. Which uh, I mean, I'm, we're both not a fan. And I know you, I know people do like it, but it's it's one of those things where it could be a lot easier implemented with um, just a, like a US dollar value rather than just a stupid token because you do have to go through regulations to cash out anyway but the um, the, uh, the the guys who uh, run Gab, the social media or the dissenter which is the comment on any URL on the internet completely decentralized in a way where um, you can't you can't be censored, it's non-censored and uh, Comments can't be removed or blocked or things so you can comment on any web page that exists and it'll be there forever. Uh, they've got their own Brave browser which basically takes out all the whole um, back token but leaves in all the good features like the privacy and the uh, encrypted connection and things like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah so, sense. um, yeah, so like, yeah, real quick, I just wanted to interject um, because, like, um, just to just to make it clear about the Brave browser. See, look, I'm I'm using the Brave browser right now. We don't, we yeah, don't, yeah, yeah we don't. Like, the Brave browser is great, and we think it's a great concept, and we think uh, it's great that they, you know, when the creator created it, they made it open source. Um, because again, you know, Brave, the way that it's set up right now is broken because you know, in order for you to get your tokens, which are, again, ERC-20 tokens, as uh, you remember earlier on, we were talking about the singular DTV tokens, you know, that they're, they're basically worth nothing. So anyways, these ERC-20 tokens, you know, have to go through this uh, this thing called Uphold, you know, the the, uh, the service Uphold here. I'm going to show you real quick. And, uh, and then, you know, this is like a centralized bank. And so, you know, it has all KYC and it's all this stuff. And so just like Spence was saying, it's all unnecessary middlemen that don't need to be there. So, you know, we're, you know, so, some people out there are, you know, cre they, they, they created a fork of Brave. So, I mean, essentially what they did is they just, you know, they got the open source of Brave and they built another browser um, just like Brave. And uh, now instead of having to get uh, uh, 
what is it like uh bat tokens you know the you know basic attention tokens and have them go through uphold and all this other shit you know they're gonna make it you know uh, go through um you know have just a regular use of a regular cryptocurrency correct like a bitcoin or litecoin or whatever i think their plan at the minute i think uh, i've just had a quick look you can try a browser right now so i'll make sure to send you the link but um Right now, they don't have any kind of like a. I guess it's a tipping service, which is what the. Yeah, what it was supposed to be. I mean, that's what it was supposed to be, at least. Yeah. 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 But um, I do know that they are trying to implement some kind of um, Bitcoin uh, on top of the uh, the browser, but whether or not it'll work out, I don't know. But uh, the browser is just exactly the same as Brave, but it's obviously. um, and they, they've proven from their previous uh, releases and things that they come out with, and I know they're associated with a lot of, uh, you know, right wing kind of. Um, they get a lot of bad press anyway, I guess. But, yeah, you're um, talking about Gab. So Gab is yeah, the one yeah. that's forking it. They're the ones that are forking Brave. They're the guys which they first nice. released the yeah they first released the extension, which was just a regular Chrome extension, which allowed you to make a comment on any unique URL so you can make a comment anywhere whether it's a web page which has active comments or not which is really uh, interests me because people who own the website have no control of the people who are commenting on their website so right. you can guarantee that there's no censorship the people that are making the comments there are genuine people and uh, you can kind of uh, you can see a, diff- a very different um, uh, outlook on some things like you might get a page which has like completely positive reviews and then in a situation like that you can see that the people that are muted by that website actually have a different opinion so that's a really nice feature and they're obviously trying to integrate that into this uh, this browser there. I think they're just basically trying to uh, build in a whole free speech ecosystem uh, peer network where people can just you know pay each other for whatever they want without anyone telling them whether they can or not and tell people things that they may or may not want to hear without right. people telling them that they cannot cannot say that so it's uh, that's really just, interesting yeah, yeah it's amazing bro that's what we need I mean yeah, you know that's why that's right. you know that's why all this technology is it goes beyond Bitcoin you know uh, it's 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 about you know censorship free you know environment you know right now we're living in a very censorship you know filled uh, world. And uh, we're, you know, right now, uh, that's why, you know, we need the the solution to that. And what is the solution to that? You know, creating a, a world in which uh, we're not censored anymore. And uh, this this technology allows us to, to do that. So hell yeah, man. Yeah. So that's that's something which um, I'm definitely going to try out uh, soon. But I've, I've got nothing here. It's a brave browser. I mean, as yeah. soon as I switched over, I've, I've absolutely loved it and everything's. Yeah. So, it, by the way, when, as soon as uh, that new browser comes out, the new fork for the Brave browser, let us know so that we can all upgrade together and uh, test it out and all that shit. I've, I've just sent you the link. Oh, there. did you? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, man, but, there we go. Um, I, I'll install it during this week because I've been so busy with work myself, and I've just seen they were releasing like. Um, uh, I said, sorry, the page doesn't exist. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I'll, I'll find it for you, but the, all right. um, I think it was kind of like a. First come, first serve kind of thing. First 100 comments on there. Like okay. The beats would get in the download, but uh, I think for uh, well, the uh, alpha or the beta releases out now. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see that it was only a month ago that they were talking about doing yep, it. Yep. They work really hard. And it's, they're doing it's it. There, they're so. fucking doing it. And yeah. so you know, just to add, a, just to add real quick about all this stuff. You know, what makes all this stuff so awesome is that you know, whenever there's projects out there that you know us purists, you know, there's a few of us that are purists out here just about technology for real. Um, you know, like when, you know, when we see shit like this with the Brave browser, you know, to me, it's like when, when the whole thing with Brave and Uphold and all this shit started going down, I was like, fuck, man, we need a solution. And bam, sure enough, here's a solution. You know, so like anytime that I'm, I see projects in the future, there's plenty of projects out there. I'm not going to name any, um, but that, you know, are very centralized, but they have like something super awesome. And, you know, a lot of us that are purists are like, fuck, man, you know, this sucks. It's like, no, man, it's, it doesn't suck. You know, eventually once it gets popular to, to the point of where, you know, this thing is popular, people are, you know, someone's going to jump uh, to the, what is it? Someone's going to j- uh, jump to the, ah. Uh, if someone's going to, you know, um, uh, rise to the occasion and create, you know, the solution, you know, which the solution is like right now, you know, we're, we're creating a solution to the Brave uh, browser situation and creating a decentralized, a real 
real 100% decentralized solutions. So just like a lot of people are having problems with uh, exchanges, you know, now all of a sudden you're seeing all these decentralized exchanges popping up everywhere because, again, so I'm just creating a solution, you know, to, to this problem that we have. And uh, that's it. You know, like, don't, you know, the, all, all, every time that we see anything decentralized, like fucking uh, XRP or the JP Morgan coin or fucking, you know, Bray, you know, the bat token or whatever the fuck it is out there. Um, again, you know, j just know that eventually down the line, someone's going to start, you know, creating a decentralized version of that. And uh, just like we need to create a decentralized version of everything. So, um yeah, sorry about my rant. I was just uh, just wanted to make that no, point, it, you know, about everything that's, you know, yeah. All it, it all comes from, and uh, a, another good uh, good thing to take note is um, all these things which do come up to get criticized and things get put down, it's only a catalyst for another person to come along and create something uh, out of a problem which would no longer be a problem in their version. And the, the best version will survive at the end of the day, and when, when there's a perfect version out there, I mean, this, this, uh, the Gab browser, or whatever they call it, I think they call it a dissenter browser, which is just, uh, yeah. they're trying to push the whole narrative of um, uncensorship, uh, you know, censorship resistant uh, comments and free speech and also payments for the, uh, the Bitcoin implementation that they want to put in there. So it's all, it's all good stuff. But, Fuck um, yeah, man. It's a beautiful time. If, yeah, and even if it does, um, doesn't work this time there'll be someone else that comes that's right and creates, so there's nothing to um worry about if, uh, yeah so don't go right the first time. yeah and that's why you know just to like talk about you know let's talk about projects real quick just for a quick second you know just I'm, I'm i got coin market cap here on the screen but just to when again when we're talking about projects and, and, and all this stuff it's knowing you know what these projects actually do and what and what you know what what yeah so like um when you know that, that a project is actually the very actually very decentralized you know that that's a, a good project for the future when you see projects that are not decentralized at all you know they have some sort of centralization then these things are not gonna they're just not gonna be around in the in the real future and remember we're t remember we're talking about like right now you know we're in the early you know, 90s or something, and we're talking about Microsoft or, you know, or, 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 you know, early 2000s or late 90s, you know, like that time when we're talking about, you know, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, you know, eBay, um, you know, well, uh, PayPal, and it's like, you know, which one of these are really going to be around 20 years from now? And uh, I think the ones that are really going to be around, you know, 20 years around, you know, 20 years from now are going to be things that are decentralized, and those are the only ones that are really going to last and uh, make any kind of impact, and, uh, you know, yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? Just choose, you know, choose wisely, guys. You know, don't don't go for for the money maker per se. If you're if you're just trading, I get it. But um, but if you're looking for the long run, you know, um, make sure that you're not picking something like basic attention token. Again, if you're just trading basic attention token, you know, all, all good, man. You know, make that money, fill those bags. But other than that, you know, basic attention token isn't something that's going to be around in the very near future because just like as we're talking right now, we're they're already creating a solution to that that's going to put basic attention token literally, you know, out out of business, you know, like overnight. And uh, since basic attention token is only an ERC twenty token, um, according to their bylaws, you know, they can just disappear overnight and they don't owe you shit. So, you know, be careful out there, guys. Yeah, every, I mean, I would like to say anything was um. 100% risk free, oh, nothing is, but um, yeah, it's definitely a lot more um, risky than it's portrayed with. It's, it's one of those things when you get into the space and you kind of get really deep into it and kind of have a look at what's going on, uh, you can seem like some of the projects which are really up there in the top 10, uh, top 100, even when you're on the coin market cap, these are the kind of things which have uh, already made it and you should ignore, but in reality, these are the things which are. Um, Pre, pre internet startup companies which I haven't even got started yet. So there's a, there's a lot of things out there which, in my honest belief, is there's some things that Bitcoin can't do which are on there, which um, like things like Oracle services and things like that. But my honest belief is everything which is already being created can and will be implemented on the Bitcoin network eventually. So maybe things will be to the race and be to the finish line, but I think as long as the Bitcoin network stays, uh, stays un unaffected and 
on damage and it doesn't get attacked or things like that, then uh, I think everything will be built on it eventually. So you've just got to know what, what you're doing, I guess. But if you're, um, if you're throwing money around just trying to make a quick, uh, a quick trade, I totally know where you're coming from. I mean, I do it myself because it's, it's, um, it is really ridiculous right now. I mean, there's no other, there's no other thing in the world where you can make a, even 10% on something a day, day after day. day so. Uh, it's a very exciting kind of thing we're going in, but um, yeah, it's 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 scary and exciting. So we'll have to see man. what what things go. <laughs> but anyways, you know what? On that note, I think uh, you know we should bring this uh, podcast right to an end. And, yeah, uh, that sounds good. Yeah, call it night. Um, you know what? I think um, you know by the way that the tonight's or you know today's broadcast kind of went down. I think that, uh, you know, we should actually have, you know, keep it a podcast, you know, right now, like actually, you know, it's just a podcast, right? For now, we're just talking about stuff and uh, we'll have different uh, type of subjects each day, but um, but it seems to be working well because, you know, we we're bouncing around a bunch of subjects, you know, we started with crypto, started talking about some other shit in the middle, ended up with crypto again, and uh, yeah, you know, it was really beautiful. We had, you know, a lot of information and I thought it went really well, right? I hope the audience thinks as well. What do you think, man? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want people to kind of um, let us know what they're more interested in because I just want to talk more about some ideas that I have and obviously there's people out there which do have questions. I think it's important for them to uh, speak up. I think it's really important not to feel like... Um, I think it's very uh, daunting when you kind of get into the space and you do a lot of research and you uh, hear a lot of people talking about different things, it's, it's difficult to kind of even make a comment and look like you don't know what you're talking about and it's not, there's nothing wrong to um, ask, there's nothing wrong about asking questions at the end of the day, so anyone that has a question, I encourage everyone to uh, definitely just make a comment just to uh, get the ball rolling and maybe you'll discover something which you didn't realise you would from the start. Yeah, for sure, man, I mean, again, we're, that's, you know, a great point that you make here, you know, Dom, right now, all of us feel stupid in this space, you know, mm-hmm. because there's just so much going on and it's just so new yeah. and so everything. But, you know, that again, with that being said, don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. Don't be anything. Please, you know, this is why we do what we're doing here. We want to open up the forum, you know, um, and we want to open up the floor to you guys. Please, you know, I have the Discord available, um, which is what we're using right now to have this conversation. Um, the comments below um, and so many other forums in which, you know, you could contact us and, and, and ask questions and then be part of this whole thing. Uh, but again, please ask away any question that you have about any kind of anything within this space at all. Ask away because, again, it might seem like you know, you're intimidated or scared of asking the question because you're, you're you know, you, you think that we know a lot about this space and you're like, oh, you don't want to ask a question like, what is Bitcoin? What is a Bitcoin wallet? What is th- this technology? You know, it, like, again, ask us, you know, if you're, there's really a lot of you guys out there that don't know about this and really want to know more about this, you know, like, please feel free to ask us, you know, we're here to learn all together. We're all learning together. We're all teaching together. We're all part of this community trying to make it grow and make a positive change for the world and for our lives and for everyone and uh we need we need all of you guys and we need everyone's uh you know opinion perspective and uh we want to keep the conversation going constantly you know for real this is why we're doing this you know kind of podcast thing as well because it's like we want to you know continue making this as more as as community oriented as humanly possible so that we're all you know we're all involved we are we just collecting opinions yeah. and, uh, we're all collecting opinions we all just want to have the best understanding from a lot of different perspectives and uh, it's a big world out there and a lot of people see things in a different way so you might think the way you see things are right but when you speak to some person in a different situation you'll completely change your mind and it's not wrong to be wrong about something or to have to change your mind about things and I know it's uh, difficult for people to uh, change their opinion and it's uh, something which we all should get better at because at the end of the day if we're all more open minded uh, everything wouldn't be so fucked up as it was today so, yeah man for sure yeah. bro it's all about you know just more understanding and communication and uh, and that's it and acquiring knowledge mm-hmm. and not being scared to acquire that knowledge alright mm-hmm. so alright guys well with that being said 
thanks again for watching don't forget to please like please subscribe please leave those comments please hit that bell icon so you know when we hit the when i drop these videos and uh you know thanks again and don't forget to join the conversation all right thank you for watching and uh we'll see you guys tomorrow peace see ya